you ever am. Dun 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 Hey guys, what's up? Today I have with me the dash cam, the Blackview 750S. Now this is going to be an interesting install because I'm actually going to be replacing my stolen Blackview 650S. It's been a break in and all the cars got, got hammered in. And as you can see, my car boots open. Whoa. Okay. I took the dash cam, ripped that off. Oh yeah. I can't see your flyers. They, they didn't want to take them. They never took your flyers. They fly never took the flyers. They were not interested in cosmetics. I am so disappointed. So in this video, we're going to be testing out some cool things. Like for example, does the new dash cam work with the back dash cam of the old one? Does the new SD card, is it the same as the old one? Will it work with the new model? And we're going to be doing this install together. So come along, let's check it out. All right. So first, I want to show you the area. The bad guys, they straight away just stole the front facing dash cam from the car and they just ripped it open. Now my installation had the wiring coming through the pillar, the front pillar. And because the wire was going through the front pillar, they tried pulling the wires out. But obviously they gave up because this is a kind of a hard thing to remove. So I do recommend if you are installing the dash cam, make sure you wire it through the pillar because it adds a bit of protection. As you can see, they left my back dash cam plugged in. So this is the 650S. Now I've heard that you can't mix up the models. So every single pair that you buy is unique. That's what I heard from the Ford dealership. However, I'm gonna be testing out to see if I can use the back dash cam with the front one, see how it plugs in together. I got myself the 750S and it also has a new back dash cam the good thing about the new back dash cam is it is actually full HD unlike the previous one which was just HD before you get going make sure you unlock the dash cam here and just take a screenshot of your Wi-Fi credentials because if you ever reset your dash cam it will reset to these this username and password all right so as you can see we got some wires coming through the top so this one is for the power and this one is the connection to the back now these wires they're just wired through the pillar and that wire goes through the headboard to the top and as you can see it connects around to the rear dash cam there. So for this setup, I'm gonna be reusing that wiring and hoping that it works. But one more thing I wanna show you is. So I'm not sure how well you could see that, but the PowerMagic Pro is wired up out there. And the thing with the PowerMagic Pro is customizable. So you do get different settings here, which you can choose which voltage you want as the cutoff point. And you can choose if you want to have a timer session setting or if you want it to run infinity. So I've got it on infinity and I've got the lowest voltage point to keep just a, a tiny bit of juice for my battery to go. All right, so now's the fun part. What I'm going to do is simply get the dash cam and let me just get rid of the plastic. Da -da -da. And the cap. Unlock it, get rid of the plastic. And now we've got a nice set. The good thing about this holder is that it's fully changeable. So you can even do some front facing camera modes if you position it in the right area. Just placing it on the cam here and I'm just gonna plug in the wires. So this is the power wire and let me just show you where it goes. So the power wire goes in the top here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this thing power wire goes in the top here and the rear view camera wire goes in this one so you just plug those wires in now it says there's no SD card so what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna try using the SD card that came with with last year's version the 650s and see if that works I have done some tests upstairs with the computer 
and the new SD card is actually slightly faster than the old SD card. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. All right, so the SD card just goes straight in there and they've got a little marker to show you the direction it goes. So there you go, SD card is in. Sounds a little bit nasally. Please do not restart the power. All right. So while that's happening, I'm gonna go on my phone and get the Blackview app. And Blackview Wi-Fi. Blackview for your safe driving. And Wi-Fi is on because you can see the blue lights running. And there it is. You can see that my Blackview is right there. So I'm gonna connect, and again the password. All right, so it looks like we're connecting here. So I'm going to go over into Blackview. So it's connected now. And we can go into the live view. And you can see it right here. There you go. So it looks like it's good news that the dash cam does work with the same power and wiring. Let's just see if we can connect into the back camera. So please check the status of the selected camera. So it looks like the back camera isn't being connected. So it could be that I haven't plugged in the wire or it could just purely be that it requires a new dash cam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the back dash cam and you can just pull it out like so and the top cap comes out like so and I'm just gonna unbox the box and we're good we've got this dash cam ready so I'm just gonna go into the back seat now and see if I can connect the back camera all right so I'm just gonna get this wire out and I'm gonna plug it into this fella it looks like there's some light happening so I'm gonna go into the live view and I'm just gonna hit back. And as you can see, the back camera is connected. Front camera. Now, I just wanna do a quick test. So some of the pain points I had with the 650S is that it was very, 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 very slow to transfer files over Wi-Fi network, especially when the car was in normal recording mode or event recording mode. In parking mode it was faster. However, the worst thing about it is this Blackview app was insanely unreliable. My clip lengths were three minutes and it pretty much never complete downloading a video 90% of the time. It was, I just had to keep on retrying to download the same file. So in the end I just developed my own app to automatically download and it worked fine. I've heard that the 750S has actually got faster chip inside. It doesn't have faster Wi-Fi, so it's still on the two gigahertz spectrum. But I just wanna see how fast will it download one of these files. So let's just see, copy to internal memory card. It's a bit hit and miss, but it is downloading. So that one downloaded fine, which is good news. However, as you can see, it's a bit clunky, the whole downloading interface. You can't have it downloading in the background. As soon as you hit the download button, you just have to wait out that progress bar. And if you hit cancel, it won't download. I'm hoping in future, they'll update the Blackview app and they'll make it, for example, things like automatic downloads or background downloads. Or you just tap the ones that you wanna see and then it will download for you. But at the moment, that's one of the biggest issues. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna investigate the settings that you get with the 7050S. So there's a couple of the settings I wanna change. So let's go inside, time zone. The first thing you wanna change is the time zone. So first you wanna make sure you're in the light, right geolocation. So mine's plus 10. We got no daylight saving time here in Queensland. Video. So by default it is full HD, 60 frames a second, which means that it will be recording at the highest quality, which is 12 megabits front and 10 megabits back, which is actually higher than the previous version of the camera. There's something enhanced night vision. I'm not sure what that will look like, but I'll show you. Recording. Normal, 
normal recording, automatic recording, voice recording, time and display, speed, video length and sent. When you're on full HD, 60 frames a second, you can only have one minute length segments. And this is one of the biggest pain points for Blackview users that you don't get one big complete file. You get lots of little chunks. Previously, you can go up to three minutes, but now if you want to record 60 frames a second, you can only go for one minute. Now I want to turn on locked event files. What that means is it's going to have a cache of 50 event files. So whenever the car gets knocked or you go over a bump or you tap it for manual recording, it will store 50 of those and the 50 event files will be locked out and it will only be overwritten by other event files. Overwrite locked files with new event files when the storage is full. So I'm going to turn it on. So rear camera rotation. So if you install the dash cam incorrectly around the back, you can actually flip the camera. So I don't need to do that because I'm planning on doing it well. Sensitivity, previously in my 650S, pretty much every single time I got back into the car, it always says, an impact was detected. And because it, by default, it's just too sensitive. Like when I pull down my trunk or open the door, it's just too much impact. But you can change the settings depending on your situation. This is something that you should play with. I'll share with you my sensitivity settings. System. So LED. I'm going to turn them all off this time. Because last time I got robbed when I had one LED light on. So I'll see how that goes. And this cool thing about this is it turns everything off. Even the Wi-Fi symbol, everything. Proximity sensor. So on the, on the side of the dash cam the left side where the Wi-Fi logo appears, you can actually tap it with your finger. And by default, what that does is it turns on audio recording on or off. I want to change that. So it's manual recording. The reason why I'm doing that is just say, just for example, if I see something dodgy happening. So when you swipe that area, usually manual recording is triggered, which means it will start recording manually. <laughs> For the next minute and it also include the 10 seconds before you tapped it however manual recording is only started if you're in normal driving mode or in parking mode so if you're if there's already an event for example a bump in the road or anything like that which actually happens often when driving it won't actually do anything it will just not, nothing nothing will happen here secondly something to consider is do you want to record audio or not so everything that the black view records is saved on the SD card and the SD card is not encrypted so if a thief does get in and steal your SD card he can actually he or she can actually go through all of your files see where you're driving and he can also listen to what you're saying so if you're the kind of person that maybe chats to your girlfriend on the phone or just chats with their mates and you might reveal some dodgy secrets maybe you're cheating on your girlfriend maybe you tell them your bank details maybe you just bitch about your work the criminals will hear everything you say. Now, I hope Blackview one day update this service and make it encrypted. Come on, some basic security we need. So far, what they're going to do is in January, they're going to be dropping a 4K camera. But the 4K only records at 30 frames a second, not 60. So I don't know. I don't understand it. It's going to be more expensive and all that stuff. But just be wary. If you're recording audio, if someone steals your SD card, they're going to see where you're driving and they're also going to be here at what you're saying. So anything you say is being recorded. So for me, I think I'm going to turn my audio off because there's really no need for it. Maybe there is a need for it, but the risk of someone stealing my, my sensitive information is far greater. So that's what I'm going to do there. There's something called scheduled reboot at 3 a.m. every single day. The camera will automatically reboot and that's just to make sure that it doesn't slow down. You know, it just irons out all these kind of bugs you get. You know, Windows, Android, all that kind of stuff. There's always issues. So at 3 a.m. by default, all the cameras will restart, which for criminals is great. They can go into your car. They know at 3 a.m. is the golden hour when nothing's getting recorded. Although, it won't restart the dash cam unless it's in parking mode. So if it hasn't detected any motion, it won't restart. If it's detected any motion, no restart will happen. But as soon as it stops detecting motion, um, it will go for a restart. So I'm going to change the time of mine because I don't want to be that bait. I won't tell you the time I pick, but guys, pick a different time. And speed alert, you want to turn that off. That one's by default. Use a text overlay, you don't need that. All right, that's good. You probably want to change your login credentials by default. So I'm going to change mine. 
All right, so I'm gonna go inside this section called voice guidance. I'm just gonna check it out. So it tells me when it's turning on. It tells me when it's turning on normal recording. It's telling me when it's gonna start an event recording. That's off, that's fine. Change in recording mode, that's fine. Power off is gonna tell me when it's powered off. Turn off speed alerts. Cloud related stuff is on. Impact detected is on. Once you've done all that, you just hit the save and close. And that, my friends, means that the dash cam is now restarting. So if you change time zones, that's when it would automatically format the card. So you can turn off the Wi-Fi light, but it will only be off in parking mode. It's interesting, like, hmm. Is it good to have it on or off in a deterrent? I think the place I was parked, there was no mobile data signal. So I think the criminals must have known that. That's why they probably went into my camera and tried stealing it. Whereas if I was parked in a place which has mobile data signal, they probably just wouldn't have touched the car. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, but that's the extent of the parking sensors. And now it's time to just plug the camera in place. What you want to do is you want to turn on this mode, the live view. And from the live view, you can actually see what's going on. So as you're placing the camera, you can see exactly if it's centered or not centered. So first, I'm going to ask my lovely assistant to stand in the middle of the car in the front and we're going to place the front camera in the right place. So this is the middle of the car. So I'm in the live view right now and I'm just trying to decide the best place to place the camera. I want to see if I can place it a bit more inconspicuous. Now I've got this checkered flag on my wind windscreen. So I'm just seeing, can I put it here? Maybe be less noticeable? Or does it need to be down there? And hit annoy. All right, we've been experimenting right now, and I think that we're gonna go with the... Hidden away option. Yeah. I think it's just safer, isn't it? Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> you get a live view. <laughs> it's not fully hidden away, but it does mix in with the mesh. Yeah. And we got a Ford Mustang here, so... Yeah. So I'm just taking off the sticky gel, and what's good about it, it just comes off. It's really easy. And they do give you a spare one if you do want to reinstall yours. All right, so I'm just making sure that all the cabling is nice and tight and spun up the right way. So you want to get that slack and just throw it inside. sure that it goes underneath the whole thing otherwise it'll be showing so there's a lot of slack in there I just want to make sure that I've got a nice bit of connection so I'm just gonna test it one more time and test it one more time and, and it's good because you can move the wire in and out. So you just remove the red sticker. You nice. need some nails for this bit. <laughs> I'll give this back to you, babes. Good luck. Give me a kiss. Good luck, baby. Thank you. So what I've done is, I've just counted up the dots, so I went 5 up and 12 to the right and I've just aligned it along the dots, that's how I got my insulation.
and I used my lovely assistant to make sure that the car is straight. It's perfect. Love. And you got these ties, if you can just show me putting it underneath here. Again. Away from the airbags. Just pushing the wires underneath the hooks here. Yeah. So I'm just literally just pushing, pushing it up. Popping the rubber back in. All right, so just to tidy up the job, I think I'm gonna use one of these little cable ties because you want the wires to be out of the way. You don't want people to visually see the wires. So I'm gonna tuck the wires towards the rear view mirror and hook the wiring so a bit more here. I'll tucked away like that. Then I've tucked the wires underneath this top thing. All right, I just wanted to make it nice and clean. I think it's a nice tidy job. We've hid the wiring behind this little cross stitch area and we've hid the dash cam inside that little cross stitch area, unlike where it was before, which was server in sight. So now it's time to set up the rear view camera. So I'm gonna be placing facing forward where the text isn't visible. So it looks cleaner from the outside and I'll be popping them in here. Something I want to test actually before I go is I want to see if I can just slot in the new camera into the position of the old camera. It's a really good idea. I heard it might not work, but let's just see. So this is the old camera and they're pretty much very, very, very similar in size. And I'll see if I can just pop that in. And it actually just pops back into the old hole so we don't need to actually make a new setup. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. All right, so normally this black light would be on, but I've disabled that in the firmware. So let's check the app to see if it's actually working. This camera. Working mode on. And there you go. You can see it. And if you go look up here, I'm just going to be twisting this until I get a nice view. There you go, that looks good. There you go. That's awesome. That's it. That should be on. Done. All right, just quick round up of what we learned. You can't turn off all the lights. The lights only go off if you're in parking mode. However, if you're in normal mode or event mode, you will see some lights. Secondly, you can reuse the old holder in the back one at least. I'm not sure about the front one because they, they stole that. You can reuse the exact same wiring and you can use the same SD card that you might have had in the previous model. That's it, we're done. Woo! And filming today has been done by yours truly and has had to put up with Mr. AC's lots of directions. But it's been an absolute pleasure and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you like it, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and write some comments in the comment section below. <laughs> I'm just hungry. <laughs> Overall, this has been such a fun video to make. It started off with the sun out and now we're literally in some lighting. So, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, bye. Yay, Kyra loves technology. Kyra loves technology. Kyra loves technology. Cairo 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 loves technology. All right, for those of you who have also hacked into their dash cam, the IP address hasn't changed and you can still access it using the IP address and download files using your own applications. So I'm just using an application that I built to automatically download all the files and it's working completely fine. So nothing has changed between 650 and 750 regarding the API or the SDK. Wow, I understood nothing of what you said. <laughs>